Uh, good morning all, thanks for being there. I hope you survived the storms and uh, things weren't too badly damaged. Um, following on our conversations and discussions about technology, Andrew, your, your extensive piece again, um, and sort of setting out the horror, sort of uh, the um, negative side of it, um, and setting up the sort of dystopian perception of it um and, and by the way I, I don't think you you've been rude unless i'm <laughs> unless i've been missing something perhaps i'm blind to it but i i think you've just been challenging the ideas i don't think you've been rude but um if you have that then uh, i i've missed it um uh, and i you i was fascinated to hear that you um had uh, David Hockney exploring Quantel at uh, Paul and Bournemouth. Uh, I'd be interested to learn more about that and what you felt about that, because that was quite a while ago, and uh, that would have been um, sort of inventive at the time. Um, so, yeah, I'd be interested if you can share some more about that. Karen, obviously, you know, you're, you were presenting the fact that you're using technology as a tool, and it has enabled you, which is great. And I think that's one of the things about thinking about... AI in the future is, um, you know, it's the unknown. So, of course, you know, we're looking forward and trying to speculate about the, the possibilities of it. And I think one of the things that, um, you know, endorse or sort of um, enforces the, the fears is the control of it. It's the lack of control and the size of the organisations that are then monetizing it. But th that's not really the my um, point of discussion I mean, that's a whole different subject but um, the the you know, sort of the use of the architecture I mean you know he the architect the owner of the architecture controls the space or I mean I'm misquoting Chomsky there I mean it was um, uh, what was it media he who owns the media controls the mind, you know. I mean, that's the same with if you build it, you know. If you build it and own it and then the other people are using it, you're controlling the experience. And I think that's the concern generally. But in terms of it enabling creativity, um, it turns out that we, we are all part-time coders that gave up on it in the same way that I think there are artists, you know, that that come out and they start participating in art, and it's certain a certain level of of understanding, um, and they're quite happy with that. I mean, the same the little bit of knowledge, you know, it's that sort of um, acquisition and you know interest. But we none of us kept it going. <laughs> And none of us could sustain it. Uh, I think that's fascinating because we're all part-time footballers, <laughs> but in the coding world, um, it certainly you know gives us an insight. Um, but it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't make us uh, sort of being able to set up a structure. And uh, certainly, I've chosen to be an analog painter and partly because of the tradition of it, because of the constraints of it, um, and because of the language of it. And, um, and this is why I become so um, irritated and passionate about um, trying to sort of hold it to be accountable at a high le higher level than the majority of the experience. Um, so anyway, uh, Patrick, I think you said it's, it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. And when our armor sort of um, comes flying in, and I'm sort of reluctant to uh, accept that. I think, you know, we, do, we are responsible for our actions. You know, it's not just the style. The style is significant, but um, choosing what it is you actually engage with and the you know, you know, actions speak louder than words. It's the, the style of it is um, certainly a contributing factor to how it's perceived. Um, anyway, and now I've got a sort of final little thing. Oops. Oh, it's the wrong way around. And now... <laughs> 
Oh, Brian. What are we going to do? I'm sorry you can't hear the sound.